Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because honestly, you probably aren't playing with power, and that's just sad. Nintendo Entertainment System. Could the name be more long-winded? Why is there so much space in the cartridge? It's a waste! I know the console's old, but games get stuck inside of it so easily. Blowing in the cartridge does not fix your problem. Stop that. These square corners can really hurt your hands over long periods of time. Anyone else's thumbs feel sore after a long gaming session? The NES is home to tons of LJN games. Yeah, you know the ones. Why does this controller have a microphone for games that look like this? Was that really necessary? The controller cords on the Famicom are way too short. NES Advantage? That's a funny way of spelling NES cheaters. The bottom of the NES has an expansion pack for accessories, but none of them were released in America. Everything about the top loader is awesome, except that there's no component output. Why would they get rid of that? The NES basically created the wizard. It also created Super Mario Bros. the movie. Ugh. You know, I want to meet the person that said, yeah, you know what, let's make a glove controller. That's a great idea. Attaching the sensors suck. You have to put tape on it just so it stays upright. And when you give up on the power glove after five minutes, the buttons on the controller are not only mushy as hell, but the controller still sucks since the glove always picks up your motions. Whose idea was it to turn something as basic and simple as a D-pad into a tiny rocking platform? And you can't even push the other buttons while you're on it. So what do you do? You hold Hold the controller in your hand, which defeats the whole purpose, just play with a controller! The NES Max is cool, but this D-pad is garbage. This circle thingy doesn't need to exist. Look at this controller. What is this, a boomerang? Nope. And don't even get me started on the U-Force. It's basically the Kinect, but 10 times worse. The speed board does not put the speed at your fingertips. Unless you're me and actually love this thing. Owning Rob in the 80s is the equivalent to owning a body pillow in 2019. Oh, oh, ah, you gotta add the NES Classic to your video. Did I say you could come in? Go back to your rock. It's a boulder. A boulder, don't forget to do it. Whatever. This is just a Raspberry Pi in a cute overpriced package. Look at the length of this controller wire. This is unacceptable. There's only one controller in the box. The game selection overall is pretty good, but where the heck is DuckTales, or the other Mega Man games, or Tetris, or Adventures of Lolo? Why is there Super C on here, but not Contra? That's like if they added Mario Bros 2, but not the first one. The little door doesn't open. Only a wuss would use a save state for an NES game. Okay, John, you can add this in the end. This was completely unscripted, so basically I was done recording for this video, and I was trying to unplug this, okay? And when I unplugged it, basically, um, everything just got really defangled up. Like, look at this. This is completely torn off. It's stuck inside the NES Classic. Now, why is this like this? Because I was forced to buy a third-party extension cable because the freaking controller wire is too short on this. Okay, so update. I was able to get my controller working again. Thank God. Now, basically what happened was this metal piece... Okay, let me try to show it. This metal piece, it got stuck inside and I had to use freaking tweezers to pull it out. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't really accurate to my feels and thoughts. Because let's be honest, the Game Boy Advance SP is still the best handheld. Don't at me. Game Boy? What's wrong with girls, huh? <laughs> Sexist. Look at how bulky and ugly this thing is. Ugh. I can't even see the screen, dude. I need a flashlight to see what I'm playing. And the screen is so tiny. Gonna need a microscope, too. Why are the colors green and black? This is like the Virtual Boy, but... Well, uh, okay, you know what? Never mind. I didn't say that. I, no. No, that thing is... That is a whole nother thing. There was only five launch games. Yeah, five. There was exclusives in the other regions, but damn, that's just pathetic. The only reason people remember the Game Boy is because of Tetris and Super Mario Land. That's it. Handy Boy? You call this piece of garbage handy? The Game Boy really kicked in the era of crappy movie games being released just to cash in. It was relentless back then, let me tell you. Ew, that teal backdrop and pink buttons don't match at all. There's only two Barbie Game Boys, but I wanted one. Oh, You know, what kind of name is Game Boy Pocket anyway? The original Game Boy could fit in your pocket too, so... 
I, I don't know. The Game Boy Pocket didn't fix the Game Boy's biggest problem, the freaking dark screen. Yeah, I know, the Game Boy Light did that, but why did it take two revisions to get to this point? Why did they release the Game Boy Light and Game Boy Color in the same year? That's like if the PS4 Pro and a PS5 came out within a few months of each other. There would be riots. Wow, Game Boy Color, three games for launch, and one of those was Tetris, which was a game I think many, many people, maybe a few people played, I don't know. This camera has to be the worst quality I've ever seen in my entire life. When you're transferring Pokemon and the Game Link cable came undone because you touched your Game Boy the wrong way. God, I hate that. The Game Boy Color apparently has color, but I still can't see the screen because there's no backlight. Oh, of course. Just stick this janky light thing inside the handheld and you can see a third of the screen now. Cool. The Game Boy Color is home to the worst Shrek game in existence. No, like seriously, don't play this. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe had some awful screen crunch, and it's the Game Boy's fault. Apparently the color of this Game Boy is atomic purple. That sounds dangerous. Get that, get that away from me. Ugh. You know what's so advanced about the Game Boy Advance? The fact that they got away with no backlit screen for the umpteenth time. The only way to fix this is to mod your GBA by taking it apart and soldering wires and all this crap, but like, who's gonna do all that? Who the hell would watch SpongeBob on a Game Boy Advance? What's with Nintendo's obsession with cards? There was an e-reader that used cards, now there's Amiibo cards? Like, come on, stop with this plebeian tech. The Game Boy Advance SP is perfect except for one thing, there's no headphone jack. There's an enhanced version of the SP with a screen so bright that I go blind just looking at it. Oh, and also, the updated SP still did not add a headphone jack. Aw, look how cute the Game Boy Micro is. Too bad it's the most uncomfortable handheld in existence. The faceplate idea is cool, but the designs are so left field. We got some freaking flowers, camouflage, sparkles. Like, who wanted this? Where's the Nintendo theme plates? Yeah, they sold one very limited edition Mario one, but even then, that plate covers most of Mario's face. The Micro isn't compatible with the older Game Boy games, therefore breaking the compatibility streak the consoles had. Apparently, some stores in America delayed the release of the Micro, because it was just a dumb novelty. I guess, I don't know why they did that, but still triggers me. I love how the website compares the size to things like lipstick, a quarter, a fly, when in the end, it doesn't matter because it's still not as good as the SP. As if things couldn't get worse, the Micro used to cost more than the SP did. Introducing the following video that is over exaggerated. New Nathaniel Bandy video created especially for YouTube.com, a large platform. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic, a bit more videos, a bit more secrets, a bit more enemies, a bit more friends, a bit more sound, a bit hotter, a bit cooler, a bit weirder, a bit more revolutionary, a bit more bandy, a bit more of what you want. It's 1080-bit, and it's yours only if you subscribe. Now you're watching with power. Superpower. I'm glad my SNES never turned yellow like half of them do nowadays. That's just gross. Anyone else think that the end labels were too small, or is that just me? The Power Fest 94 wasn't as cool as the Nintendo World Championships. So the Super Scope is a hilariously large accessory, but my god it takes a lot of batteries to work. And you gotta love the game title, Super Scope 6. Truly the most ingenious name of all time. Some parents consider the SNES a scam because the games wouldn't work on an NES. <laughs> Little did they know that in 20 years we'd be upgrading our phones annually. It's really too bad the SNES CD-ROM add-on never came out, outside of that one prototype. The SNES is home to one of the best games, Super Mario World, but it's also home to Mario's Time Machine and uh, Mario's Early Years. Ooh. The start and select buttons are too mushy. If the SNES simply had a better CPU speed, then the Genesis would have likely had a harder time competing with its blast processing slogan. Oh, and uh, now that we're on the topic, console wars are stupid. They were back then, and they still are now. They're game consoles, not a cult. The Super Game Boy is amazing because it's backwards compatible with Game Boy games. But that begs the question, why not Game Boy Color as well? Why does the Super Famicom look so much cooler than the American one? The Japanese controllers look a bit better too, but the lack of concave buttons for Y and X kind of sucks. It's kind of hilarious how the Super Famicom calls the carts cassettes. Yeah, these don't look like cassettes to me, but uh, you do you. The SNES 2 was a great look, but I got used to being lazy and pushing the eject button. Where did it go? So is this supposed to be a controller or a cellular telephone? The Scoremaster is decent, but that joystick is way too stiff. If there was a Super Scope to upgrade the Zapper, where the heck is my Super Power Arm to upgrade the Power Glove? I wish I was around when the Satellaview was a thing. It looks so cool.
Didn't see that coming, did ya? I wasn't gonna forget this. Oh! Oh, sorry. Oh, come on. Why can't you hand them to me? Why do you gotta throw it? Ugh. After the NES Classic, you'd think Nintendo would have produced more SNES Classics to prevent scalpers. But no, this is Nintendo, of course. See, that would have made way too much sense. That would have actually made people happy. The SNES controller cord is longer than the NES one, but it's barely an acceptable length. Donkey Kong Country is great, but where is Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3? And what about Turtles in Time? Or Super Mario All-Stars? I can't push the eject button for fun. And the same goes for the mini Super Famicom. Come on, I like pushing buttons! $80 is a bit much for SNES games. And yeah, I know some of the games are rare and there's two controllers, but still. It would have been great if we got a SNES mouse and Mario paint with this bundle. It's time to play it loud. Why does the narrator sound so depressed? That's commercials for you. Since when did you become the home improvement neighbor? I thought it'd be a fun little thing. I, I don't know. Are you gonna hit me in the head with anything else today? Uh, not today, no. Okay, so are we playing Mario Paint or not? Oh, hell yeah! Warning! The following video is not over-exaggerated. Basically, all opinions shared are accurate to my thoughts and feelings. What more do I really need to say? It's the damn Virtual Boy. Just look at it! What in the absolute hell happened here? High resolution 3D graphics. That adds up. I love that batteries not included is highlighted in the same way as the other console features instead of being, I don't know, hidden on the back or something. Speaking of the back of the box, it highlights about half of the entire North American Virtual Boy library. If you're gonna make a headset, include a head strap. Cheap plastic legs aren't gonna do the job and you know it. Oh wait, there is no head strap because the Virtual Boy weighs too much. It would probably strain your neck shortly after straining your eyes. Which yes, I'll bring it up. Virtual Boy games hard to look at, bad, yada yada yada. The only person that actually likes two D-pads on a controller is D-pad gamer, probably. Also, if this console has high resolution 3D graphics like it says it has, you'd think that the controller would have like, uh, oh, I don't know, a joystick for 3D movement? Six AA batteries to power this piece of crap. I can think of at least one better way to go through batteries, and that's pushing buttons on my remote for hours on end, because that would actually be more fun. But what about the battery life? It's about four hours in length. Yeah, pretty lame in comparison to the Game Boy lineup. And the battery pack is attached to, uh, the controller? That makes no sense whatsoever. Like, maybe it was to prevent the Virtual Boy from being too heavy or something, but what? This face Velcro strap thingy is surprisingly comfortable, but my biggest gripe is there's no way to replace it. What if you hand the Virtual Boy to a friend that's super sweaty and then gets it all gross and stuff? This thing is bacteria heaven. Why are the start and select buttons the same size and shape as A and B? Like, I, I get they were going for, like, the symmetrical look, but, you know, there's a reason the pause button on every other controller known to mankind is shaped differently. It lacks the same importance and is meant to be harder to reach. These shoulder buttons mesh well with my hands, but they just feel cheap. The sheer irony of Nintendo putting their question and service phone number right next to where your eyes are. The number you have reached is not in service. This not in service? What are you talking about not in service? I need to fix my Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy is technically portable, but you need the stand to set it down somewhere. So uh, yeah, I'm sticking with Game Boy, actual portable here. The 3D effects are very underwhelming nowadays. Even when they got it working properly on the 3DS, a lot of people didn't use the 3D. Oh yeah, this is another thing I'm obligated to mention. There's this extension port to play multiplayer games, but it never released, so... Yeah, I brought it up. Now go delete your comments saying that I forgot to bring this up. Please, just watch the whole video. Just do it. You know, if you have to make all your games red and black to reduce the cost of your system, it's probably not a good idea to begin with. If you're gonna make a virtual reality headset without head tracking, don't make a virtual reality headset. Maybe the Virtual Boy didn't sell well because the commercials turned it into a terrifying monster and everyone ran away from it. That's what I'm doing. You might be wondering, how many Virtual Boy games are there? 
22. That's right, just 22. And I'm going to play them all right now because I will never have a reason to ever play any of these ever again. Every single game asks you if you want to turn automatic pause on or off. Seriously? Like, I get it's to help with the eye strain, but that's just as bad as Wii games telling you to take a break every 10 minutes. For Mario's first tennis game, it's ridiculously bare bones. It's just tennis with Mario sprites. So I'm gonna make this point for a lot of Virtual Boy games, but this does not scream virtual reality. Mario's tennis could run on Super Nintendo. Luigi vs. Princess isn't centered properly, and it's bothering me a lot. Peach do be shaking that thing like it's nobody's business. I'm not okay with this music. For a supposedly advanced console, it sure sounds like this belongs on the Game Boy still. We're not facing off against Donkey Kong Jr., just Donkey, that's all. Yoshi's face and waddle when he wins is actually fantastic. Why is Koopa so terrifying? The character select screen doesn't scroll on both sides, so if I want to go right, then I have to go from the left side all the way to the right side and vice versa. Wow, what an exciting launch game, Pinball in Space. Mm, that's a new one. The pedals aren't very satisfying to hit. It feels like there's a tiny bit of delay in the input, which really takes me out of the immersion. The physics are a little wonky. The puck feels way too floaty. There's only four pinball tables. That is a pathetic amount. I never thought I'd say that I got my ball stuck in between Mega Man helmets and Galactic Pinball on the Virtual Boy, but uh, here we are now. Seriously, why does the ball slow down as I'm approaching the pedal? It keeps throwing me off. You'd think Nintendo would have used Punch-Out instead of, you know, whatever Teller Box are supposed to be? Man, I wish I was as cool as Johnny. Maybe someday. Uh, Rick? Why is your head going from your shoulders to your stomach? Oh, I think I need an adult. Picky is 527 years old? Is this a typo, or is it just a VTuber? There's only seven opponents in one final boss. It would have been nice to at least top out at 10 or 12. Whoa there, Mamoru. You can't just lift your torso out of your body. That is 100% cheating. You know, I could have mistaken this as an alpha build for Star Fox, but uh, no. This is just how Red Alarm looks. Good luck. Good luck is right. I'm playing Red Alarm on the Virtual Boy. Okay, I seriously have no idea where I'm supposed to go. This is horrible! And the first person mode doesn't help at all. Yes, I tried it. This kind of game would really benefit from a remaster on the Switch or Oculus Rift. Virtual Boy Wario Land is the name they went with, huh? I kind of preferred Wario Cruise over Virtual Boy Wario Land. Okay, but for real, it's a disgrace that a game this fun is stuck on the Virtual Boy. This would have been great on the Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance. I'm all about evolving the game of Tetris, but uh, this is not the way to go about that. Half of these Tetris pieces aren't even actual Tetris pieces. Like, if you're gonna call it 3D Tetris, why change things so drastically? And my god, this is so disorienting. I can barely tell where anything is. Some more colors would have maybe helped. I don't know, maybe not. Wait, look on the right side of the screen. This shows exactly where the piece is gonna drop. Okay, well, now I know how the game works, but I can only play properly by staring at this guide and not looking at the 3D part of the game. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of stupid. Why does every puzzle piece on this menu looks like it wants to kill me? Ah, yes, golf. The first thing I think of when I imagine VR. The golf course isn't green, so I don't think I can play this. All I can see is blood and death all over the course, that's it. I'm not the only one that's imagining Hotel Mario right now, right? So the one real Mario game we got for the Virtual Boy is just Mario Bros, but in 3D. I know a 2D platformer was in the works for Virtual Boy, but this is just sad. The music is horrible. Not all Mario music is great, but this is another level of generic and forgettable. For some reason, I'm allowed to try level 40 on the get-go, and I can confirm that that was not my best plan. Hitting the spinies from the distance is a cool idea, but the depth perception is so hard to get used to. I don't know, man. It just feels wrong seeing the Mario logo without any color besides red and black. Gotta love the elevator button sound effects. Can anyone explain to me what's so funky about Nestor's funky bowling? I mean, admittedly, I giggle saying it out loud, but it's just bowling. How funky can it possibly be? Look how freaking big the TM trademark is on the logo. Ugh. 
So when you get a spare in this game, a spare change machine pops up. Ha! Ah, okay. Oh, I found the funky. It's uh, it's Nestor's facial expressions. Okay, now that's truly riveting. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Play that back. Nestor just lost all of his hair in like two seconds. I am never going bowling after this. This flame animation with the shadowing is the best slash worst thing I've ever seen. I can't stop looking at it. Why is Kirby in my Bomberman spinoff? And why is the music so creepy? Like, really, it's just a puzzle game. Why is this on Virtual Boy? How do you even make a puzzle game without some normal arcade or endless mode? So the virtual reality gimmick for Vertical Force is that you can move your ship up and down. Eh, uh, yeah, it's basically the same concept as Zevius with dropping bombs on the ground, but whatever works. Anyone else think that our ship is way too big? God, it's so hard to tell what you can hit from the top and bottom layers. Also, the laser power-up sucks. Don't grab this one. You know, just in case you ever play this game? <laughs> yeah. It sure is baseball. The music is actually pretty catchy, but I'd much rather play this on a normal console. I still don't understand why this movie needed a game based off of it, but then it's also on the Virtual Boy of all things. So basically, you just shoot stuff, especially the guys on water bikes. Truly riveting gameplay. The virtual reality effect is zooming the camera in and out. Yawn. Waterworld isn't even that bad as some people say it is. It's just really boring. I know I sound like a broken record, but this is another game that would have made more sense on a normal Game Boy. It's actually really fun. I just hate that I have to play it in two colors. A password system in the year 1995. The game specifically said that I can only push boulders but not pull them. That doesn't make sense, but okay. Yes, I'm even playing the Japanese exclusive games. Have mercy on my soul. There's not even a menu for Virtual Lab. You just jump into the game. Oh my god, I am low-key crushing on this anime, girl. This is not okay. This is Virtual Boy. I can't be doing this! When you pause the game, it says, take a rest. Um, okay, I guess I'll take a rest. Good night. Moving around is not only laggy, but the pieces move way too fast. How do you mess up the controls for a puzzle game? So, I hate fishing games on a normal scale. How bad could this possibly be? Am I fishing in the water or magma? Only 22 Virtual Boy games, and two of them just had to be bowling. What is this sound design? Why is this like the nicest pause screen of all time? It's probably the best looking Virtual Boy pause screen. Out of the three musics, none of them are the classic Tetris theme. Although Music C is pretty catchy. I know Tetris was still newish back then, but I can't even hard drop. A horror game on the Virtual Boy is extremely ambitious, and while it's impressive for the time, there is nothing scary about it. Good luck getting to the true ending, by the way. You have to play the game without using a password, without dying even once, and you gotta do it really fast. All I can think of right now is Super Glove Ball on the NES. Look, I got nothing else, fellas. There is nothing interesting about this game. I'm sorry, just nothing. I'm not even gonna pretend to understand how SD Gundam Dimension War works, so yeah, one more game to go. Ah yes, Space Invaders. Finally, I can play this one in true virtual reality. The 3D Space Invaders is literally just Space Invaders at an awkward angle. Yep, I just played all 22 Virtual Boy games, and you wanna know what? I actually liked a few of them. Wario Land, Jack Bros, Telroboxer, Innsmouth would all actually be kinda cool to see remastered in the modern era, but this is the Virtual Boy, and it will continue to fade into obscurity until our own sun will turn red in five billion years. But anyway, thanks for watching. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Jumping from 2D to 3D, what a yippity yahoo time that sure was. Get in or get out, sucker. Let's just get it out of the way. Controller bad. This is where you like the video and subscribe because I'm just that relatable. And yes, this three-prong setup is a little weird, but it's not really that bad because every game has used two of the three sides, but why have the controller molded this way to begin with? 
The joystick actually is pretty bad. It breaks really easily, slips out of your thumb due to a lack of a good grip, and is overall just garbage. I get it's one of the first 3D consoles, but it's aged horribly. There is technically the Hori Pad, which fixes most of the original controller issues, but it only came out in Japan, so it's pretty spendy. It's definitely better than the N64 Power Glove, and yes, this is a real controller. Also, yes, it's somehow worse than the NES's Power Glove. If you want to play Donkey Kong 64 or Majora's Mask, you have to have the expansion pack. Add-ons are dumb. Even stranger is Donkey Kong 64 doesn't really need the expansion pack. There was a weird bug that could only be fixed by the pack, so it's required for that reason alone. What's up with the cartridges not having end labels? Like, why did I have to go on Etsy to buy custom ones for all my games? I like the idea of the rumble pack, but this is another thing that's aged horribly. The shaking is way too strong and is just kind of annoying. I never use mine. All right, get ready for quick story time with Bandy, fellas, because I'm about to tell you how modern gaming began. So as I'm sure you know, Nintendo and Sony were supposed to team up and make a console together, but Nintendo had issues with Sony having too much ownership. Basically, Sony had control of the Super Disc format, including Nintendo software, as well as control over licensing music and movies. Nintendo didn't like this and decided to work with Philips instead. At the time, Sony and Philips were massive rivals, so Nintendo secretly made a better deal with Philips in order to gain control back to their software and to basically over Sony in quotations. Because of that, the PlayStation now exists and so does modern gaming. So uh, you can thank Nintendo for beginning the era of microtransactions, loot boxes, and day one DLC. Good job, Nintendo. Also, the N64 only sold 32 million units while the PlayStation sold 102 million. But what did Nintendo get out of their deal with Philips? The CDI, Hotel Mario, Zelda The Wand of Gamelon, Link the Faces of Evil, and Zelda's Adventure. You couldn't ask for more of a f up, honestly. There's only 296 North American games, which might sound like a lot, but the average console has way more than that. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish they just stuck with Nintendo Ultra 64. There was a reason they couldn't, but that name sounds way cooler, and the branding itself was much sleeker and stylish. While I like the aesthetic of cartridges and the faster load times, CDs were the way to go because they could hold way more data, they costed less to produce, and were able to create a higher quality image. Because of that, Nintendo had very little third-party support, which meant a lot of the big games at the time wouldn't work on the N64. And because the N64 launch was delayed by a couple years, the PlayStation had all the time in the world to develop a fan base, which made it way more likely for third parties to make games with them. Nintendo had a lot of software droughts, which affected its overall sales. Hmm, where have I heard this before? Oh, let me think. Let's see, uh, the Wii, the Wii U, the Switch... Guess how many launch games this console had? Two of them! I hope you like Mario, because, uh, there was literally nothing else to play. That's probably why the N64 never came with a pack-in game, because there were only two games available anyway. The N64 microphone is absolute trash. It just doesn't work. I mean, maybe it did when it first launched, but nowadays, don't even bother with it. I really miss the days when Nintendo released translucent colored consoles. That's one thing about the N64 that we'll probably never see again because everything has to be simple and clean nowadays. There's no time for fun. Fun not allowed. Super Mario 64, Dr. Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, Excitebike 64, Mega Man 64, Maya Ham Soccer 64, Ogre Battle 64, Kirby 64, Starcraft 64, Bomberman 64, Ridge Racer 64, Asteroids Hyper 64, Carmageddon 64, Nuclear Strike 64, Donkey Kong 64, Namco Museum 64, Destruction Derby 64, Road Rash 64, Bass Hunter 64, Must Truck Madness 64, Shadowgate 64, Micro Machine 64, Virtual Pool 64, Golden Nugget 64, White about 64, GT 64, Gex 64, Virtual Chess 64, Quest 64, Forsaken 64, Fighting Force 64, Robotron 64, Duke Nukem 64, Madden Football 64, F1 Pole Position 64, International Superstar Soccer 64, Star Fox 64, Doom 64, FIFA Soccer 64, Wave Race 64, Pilot Wing 64, Harvest Moon 64, holy sh**, I think these games are for the Nintendo 64, oh my god! By the way, Mega Man 64 is just Mega Man Legends. Why did they change the name and make everyone really confused? I remember watching the Mario 64 Got Melt commercial when I was a kid. That makes me feel old as hell. Thanks a lot, reality. Get in or get out is a slogan lost in time. It's trying to be aggressive like the Sega Genesis was, but nobody cared. Like, I didn't even know this was the slogan until I was much older. Mario gets arrested in the Mario Party commercial. I knew he was a troublemaker all along. I just figured out why Mario is a chonky boy, and that's because he had a collaboration with Taco Bell. It's all adding up. Let's watch the first 15 seconds of this commercial. It's all in the head. The head movement. In the body. In the body. Right there. It's a process. Guide with your arm. 
Not bad. Okay, good. You saw it. You're really confused. Now what I need you to do is take a wild guess at what this game is promoting. I'll give you a second. Ponder your choice. Think about it. Think about it. All right. If you guessed Yoshi's story, then you would be correct. Congratulations. And we haven't even gotten started on the 64 disk drive. This was Nintendo's answer to adding more storage to their games. And it never released outside of Japan. So, uh, that's how well that one went. It's also kind of ironic going from cartridges to using what's essentially a floppy disk. Considering storage technology at its most primitive form is a floppy disk. What's worse, the games themselves only held 64 megabytes of storage, while the PlayStation discs were holding over 600 megabytes. Why did they even bother when the upgrade is so minimal? There's only 10 games for the system, and RanNet doesn't work at all anymore. So you know what we gotta do? Play them all, because I will never have a reason to play these again ever in my entire life. Mario Artist Paint Studio, Mario Artist Communication Kit, Mario Artist Polygon Studio, Mario Artist Town Studio. Why are there four of these games? So Paint Studio's menu screen has transitioned to still images of flowers, Venusaur, and Squirtle. What in the hell am I getting myself into? The marker squeaking is actually ear grating. I like how the smooth effect is literally just adding gauge and blur. I use this all the time, I know what it looks like. I know how to make this picture funnier. Just add the zigzag effect. Comedy 100, I did it, Gen Z. Okay, but honestly, these special effects remind me of all the goofy crap that used to be in Windows Movie Maker back in the early 2000s. It's strangely nostalgic, and I'm only just realizing how awful it was. You can only use undo one time. That's pretty lame. Why would anyone want a virtual coloring book back in the day when an actual coloring book would have been way more satisfying and fun? So you can add random pictures of Mario 64 renders. While I'm secretly geeking out inside, this is extremely pointless. Nintendo? That's not a spiny shell. That's a green shell. And this is not a spiky shell. It's a bluer spiny shell. Now, I should mention I'm playing an English translated version, so that could just be wrong and it's correct in the original Japanese version. As far as I can tell, you can't resize any of these images. You can flip and rotate them, but scaling up and down, oh, that's too hard. Oh my god, I have never seen this Mario Kart 64 render before. Why is this the most bizarre and mind-boggling game I've ever played? Holy sh**. An N64 Fire Flower render, and it looks terrible! Thank god no one's seen this before. I can't get over the pictures that you can add in this game. I mean, there's stuff from Wave Race 64 and even like Banjo-Kazooie. This game is so freaking weird! They even included all 151 original Pokemon plus a few bonus pictures. Like, why is this even called a Mario Artist game? It should have just been called Nintendo Artist. Well, this isn't terrifying at all. Okay, guys, can we just like take a minute and talk about the noses on this page? Going from top left to bottom right, we've got this super thin scrawny one that almost looks angry. Then there's this one with some freckles, but it just looks like a raindrop. Then we've got this one with hair on the outside. We've got one with a lot of hair on the inside, one with snot that's wrapping around the nose, and one that's blowing out air, and one with snot coming out of both nostrils, one that's bruised up and has a lot of blackheads, and then finally, for our final freaking finale, one that can speak in Japanese. I <laughs> Nothing reminds me more of Mario than a bunch of dudes rollerblading. Is my 64DD using a real hammer to save this picture? Like, I'm not gonna lie, this game is super charming for just how over the top it is. How do you like my beautiful animation? I spent a whole two minutes on it. There's even this weird 3D mode where you can edit the textures and stuff. Frankly, this is some pretty cool technology for the time, but I just can't imagine anybody that would want to spend time with this kind of stuff. You can even run around in the 3D mode, which is cool, but the camera is atrocious. Hey look, it's the real Turok 4! Yes, I get it now. That makes sense. So I think the point of Mario Artist Polygon Studio is to learn how to edit 3D models. It's an interesting idea, but it's just so clunky to navigate. This is legitimately nightmare fuel. Yes, I really understand what's going on now. Nobody told me that WarioWare began from this game. I wish I knew that a long time ago. Ah, yes, time to add female inside Spear. That's exactly what I wanted. What? The f 
I genuinely have no words for what is happening. Like, I must be missing the context because I just don't get it. Something is written on this bread. Oh great, now the bread is talking to me. For 50 years, we have been placing these toasters in this world. We bake the bread you can trust. Well, I don't trust you. So if you don't move on the menu, all the pieces start to just float and the music gets really creepy. It's time to move on, I'm getting really scared. Ah, so this is where Mies originated, for better or for worse. I have to say, Town Studio isn't nearly as weird as the other two, but this still has absolutely nothing to do with Mario. You can wear a mask, how appropriate. What are you even waiting for? I promise, there's no toilet behind the door, I'm telling you. There's also this weird movie studio section, where you can very heavily edit all the scenes, the characters in them, the lighting. I mean, it's shockingly in-depth for what it is. This is such a weird piece of history that clearly had a lot of effort put into it, but again, nobody knows this exists. So Mario Artist Communication Studio doesn't really work because I don't have it translated in English, and it wasn't really a game anyway. It allowed players to connect to the RanNet service and upload the things they made. So it's an interesting piece of software that's completely useless now. Speaking of RanNet, this disc can't be used anymore either. You would use a modem, mouse, and keyboard and could access the internet with it. This is just the Roblox guy, but very big. So basically, I'm playing as a god and I'm supposed to help these villagers, but man is it slow and boring. It takes forever to get anywhere, and all you do is pick up stuff and throw it. The full name of this game is Doshin the Giant Liberation Front Chibiko Chico Collection. Rolls right off the tongue. This game is obnoxious to play because you have to swap the disc with the first game since building monuments is required to make progress in this game. Who thought this was a good idea? I'm gonna say it, this game is worse than Superman 64 and I'm glad I can't read Japanese to fully experience it. The Zaymon DD. Every failed console has to have a space shooter because it's just a requirement. This game is honestly not that bad, it's just weird that it had to be played on the 64 disc drive. It looks like it would've worked on the regular N64. This is SimCity 64. It's a typical Sims game, but I can't read any of it. And that's too bad because it actually looks kind of fun and I'm vibing with the overworld music too. Maybe someday there'll be an English version to try it. This intro sounds like the credits for a Christmas Hallmark film. Either this is the worst golf game of all time, or I just don't get it. You have to swing the ball by, I think, pushing left on the joystick, and then it just kind of does it automatically and misses most of the time? Why isn't it just normal controls? A new record long shot. Thank you for celebrating two feet, I guess. How did F-Zero get a track editor before Mario Kart did? <gasps> Wait a minute. The extra tracks are kind of cool, but it's nothing special or really worth playing. What? You thought you were getting out of this video without Mario 64? Well, the 1996 Space World demo got out, so of course I'm gonna play it. The castle music sounds a little different. It's honestly a lot creepier with the longer notes. It's not just that, though. There are a lot of weird sounds that sound different. Apparently, this is what the PAL version of Mario 64 sounded like, but it's hard to say. So according to a wiki page I read, when you enter the Wiggler fight, it supposedly crashes the game. But I have a special version that's been converted to be played on an actual N64, so I guess that fixed the glitch? Phew, that was a lot more N64 than I was expecting to play. Now, this console, definitely a little weird looking at it nowadays, but it's still one of my favorites. There's a reason I have almost all the games, and that's because the few games that are good are really, really good games and still hold up today. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get Rand Networking on here. I'm gonna hack into it. I'm a hacker man. Thanks for watching. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because really, this is what they call a cube of justice. Let's get the obvious out of the way. What's up with the handle on the back? I can grab it without a handle. Just saying. 
The GameCube controller is by far one of the best. But why isn't there two Z buttons? That's not symmetrical. Ew! And it's super tiny and dinky. They could have made it a little bit bigger. Let's be real. The D-pad is just okay as well. It works, but it's way too small. The mini discs are charming, but they don't hold as much data as the PS2 and Xbox do. And worse, you can't play DVDs, which at the time was a huge selling point. There's a reason that PS2 is the best selling console of all time. Oh, but you might say, what about the Panasonic Q? That played GameCube and DVD games. Well, first off, it only came out in Japan. And second, it cost way too much money. This has to be the worst looking microphone of all time. I get why you can't play Game Boy Advance video cards on the Game Boy Player, but back then, who was really gonna pirate these videos? Especially when the quality is so bad and pixelated. So what's up with the GameCube not having a normal Kirby game? I mean, yeah, Kirby Air Ride is awesome, but isn't that a bit strange? The ASCII controller is obnoxiously big, and it stinks the keyboard only works for Fantasy Star because I love how goofy this thing is. This is the dumbest looking controller, and I absolutely love it. What kind of code name is Project Dolphin? Like, yeah, I know it's just a code name, but what is that supposed to entail? Nintendo Aquatic Simulator? The lack of online play was also disappointing. And no, Fantasy Star Online doesn't count because that's one game and you had to get a specific adapter for that to even work. Okay, yes, there were a couple other Japanese-only games, but come on, that doesn't count. GCN is the official abbreviation for the GameCube, and everybody has accepted that for some reason. GameCube Nintendo, like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Apparently, it is an NGC because that abbreviation is already taken from National Geographic Channel. This shouldn't matter. They're two completely different things. Nintendo has always had the stigma that it's only for kids, and that really shows in comparison to the PS2 and Xbox. These consoles look very slick and nice. And Nintendo's like, uh, I got a cute little box? Yeah? The day after Star Fox Adventure came out is the day Nintendo lost Rare to Microsoft buying them. Can we get some Fs in the chat? Because of this, we never got a sequel to Diddy Kong Racing, which is one of the best kart racers of all time. There's something really ominous about the GameCube commercials. Putting things or people inside transparent cubes is kind of creepy. Over 20 unexpected characters in one big brawl. As he shows off Mario and Samus. Okay, this is officially the most awkward Nintendo commercial I've ever seen in my life. Well, okay, maybe besides that amiibo one with the kid that has a crush on that girl and he like trains Mario and stuff, but uh, we, we don't talk about that one. We don't, no. In one big brawl. One big brawl, huh? Foreshadowing and also spoilers. Why is he mowing the grass when it's wet? That's a bad idea. That's really dangerous. There were a lot of cool colors for the GameCube, but nothing is gonna beat that tropical green N64. Oh, God, look at it. Mm. Oh, God, that thing is just, mmm. What do blocks of space even equate to? Well, I looked it up. A 1019 block card is about eight megabytes. Times sure have changed, haven't they? I'm not gonna lie. I miss when Nintendo was this risky with their IPs. Mario goes to jail. Mario Kart had two drivers. Mario sports games were actually fun. The Legend of Zelda jabated everyone with cell shaded graphics. Kirby got a racing game. F-Zero existed and Chibi Robo was born. Do I need to say more? The DK bongos are an amazing idea for a controller, but not great for keeping quiet. These things are so loud. I feel bad for the parents that bought these. Incorporating land play is awesome, and I even got to experience it with Double Dash earlier this year, but sadly, it only works with a few games. Kirby Air Ride having land play is incredibly cool, but it stinks you can't go up to eight players. If there's one thing that can be said about the GameCube is that it deserved to sell better. It really did. This is a charming little console that was hurt by the small disc size and poor marketing overall. It was so bad that Nintendo basically had to do a hard reset with their next console. Warning! Health and safety. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, because two screens are better than one. So get over it, people circa 2004 that were skeptical. The original DS was a revolution, but my god is it a bulky fella. And don't even get me started on the prototype. Why is the stylus so tiny? I can barely hold this. That's great that it can play GBA games, but why not Game Boy Color and Game Boy as well? 
The on-screen keyboard is downright puny. I need a magnifying glass to use this. There's an option to turn off the brightness. Imagine someone unironically doing this. When you go into the settings, you can't go back to the main menu without turning the system off, because that makes all the sense. The R and L buttons are really mushy. The strongest game for the DS's launch was a remake of Mario 64. I mean, that's cool, but that's it? Oh, also there's a demo of Metroid Prime Hunters, okay? And the rest of it was just small stuff. Don't eat cheese, it's next to a pile of DS cartridges. It's not worth it. Gotta love how the original slogan for the DS was, touching is good. Rest in peace to all the dogs and Nintendogs that have starved to death because we haven't played the game in over a decade. Just imagine if the DS's code name, Nintendo Nitro, actually stuck. We would have a console called the Nintendo Nitro IXL. Ah yes, the DS Lite. My favorite handheld to smudge my fingerprints on. I'm glad GBA games still work on the DS Lite, but the cartridges stick out now. That's not perfect unison. Bad. The system still shuts down after going into settings. Oh, well, I guess that's a fun future now. God, the DS Lite looks way too beautiful. Like, seriously, I'm almost jealous. You should have an Instagram page. The DS Lite needs one. Oh, nice. You have to use a different type of charger for the DS Lite. Why not use the same one for the whole DS family? The Nintendo DSi. If you're unfamiliar with these systems, then thankfully the name makes it really obvious it's the third iteration. I didn't realize that graffiti is just stars on a screen. I mean, hey, that's what the DSi told me, so that must be true. So I got this DSi off someone on eBay, and they literally saved rap songs on the DSi music app. That is really wholesome, but it sounds so bad, like why even bother? The back camera is nice to have, but having that just sticking out while the rest of the DSi looks smooth bothers me. Oh my god, I have to use ANOTHER power adapter? Make up your mind, Nintendo! Please stick with just one! I understand why the DSi removed the GBA slot, but it's still kinda sad. It took until the DSi XL to finally have a stylus at a decent size. Also, you gotta love that name, Nintendo DSi XL. Rolls right off the tongue. I can't get YouTube to load on this thing. I love how Flipnote Studio has instructions for writing notes, because I never would have known how to write notes before this. The DSi shop music slaps so hard. It makes me miss shop music. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Brain Age was a hip thing and it made everyone feel stupid? Good times. If the DS had online functionality, why was PictoChat limited to local wireless only? the heck? I shouldn't even be surprised. I knew it was you the whole time. What? Ah, don't rub it in, please. I get it. You but pranked wait, me. Oh. You got me. You're an epic pranker. All right, bye. Okay. I just wanted to play pack and roll. All right. Got him. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Not all opinions are accurate to my actual thoughts and views. So don't be all weed about this, okay? The name. The prototype name was Revolution. Man, they should've just stuck with that, it's cool! Nintendo sold a remarkable 100 million Wiis, but most of those were for Wii Sports and Wii Fit and never touched again. Wii Music exists. The Wii's success brought us the Wii U, the most unsuccessful Nintendo console outside of the Virtual Boy. The Wii doesn't have HDMI hookups while the PS3 and Xbox 360 do. Where is the Ethernet port? Why do I gotta buy a USB attachment? Wait. Did anyone even play Wii games online besides Mario Kart Wii? And no, Brawl doesn't count because 
I mean, come on, it's Brawl. The nunchuck is basically a dildo. The Wii Vitality Sensor. Wii Speak was only used for Animal Crossing and shovelware, basically. Why can't I play DVDs? Oh yeah, the photo channel, I remember this. Fun? Yeah, I'd like to have some fun. Hmm, let's see. Whoa, okay, that's a bit scary. Did anyone actually use the forecast and news channels? So, uh, YouTube on the Wii, it's, uh, it's how everyone should watch YouTube. The Mii channel is cool, but it's assuming the Mii's gender. Besides a few first party games, there really isn't anything worthwhile or lasting to play. The loading times for the Wii Shop channel are so freaking long. They only added 21 N64 games to the virtual console? Why not all of them? The sad fact that your grandpa was better at Wii Bowling than you ever were. Where is my new F-Zero game? Or Star Fox, hmm? The Wii Remote takes batteries. Granted, you could get rechargeable batteries for the thing, but it still sucks. Why did everyone have that elastic shell thing on their Wiimotes? Let's be real. Unless you're playing a Wii Motion Plus game, the motion controls don't work as intended. The Wii was Nintendo's first dip into abandoning their hardcore audience completely, and it's still biting them in the ass. The classic controller isn't that great. It has no grips. It's like holding a bar of soap. Every damn game had to force in motion controls. The Wii overall was way too underpowered and has left them behind in the competition ever since. When inserting the disc, it has to be on a specific side. Ugh, so inconvenient. Why does every game tell me to take a break? Please, I do what I want. The string for the wrist strap was so cheap that there used to be a website dedicated to people's possessions destroyed by the Wiimotes. Trying to type with a pointer is so irritating. Warning, the following video is over exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my actual thoughts and feelings. So don't believe in that 3D gimmick because nobody really did. You got it? Wow, Nintendo, hopping on that 3D bandwagon, huh? Well, thanks to that, your system costed way too much at the start, giving you an awful launch. And the 3D isn't even that good. I don't know about you, but it just hurts my eyes. The only game it was ever that useful for was Mario 3D Land. Even those that like the 3D don't see it very often. It's not implemented into a lot of the games. If you have manly adult hands, the 3DS is really uncomfortable to hold. So we got the 3DS, the 3DS XL, the 2DS, the new 3DS, the new 3DS XL, and the new 2DS XL. Whoever is naming their consoles is doing a terrible job. Also, I can't get over that new is actually in the name. Like, this console's not gonna be new in 20 years. Did they not realize how stupid this is? The circle pad is awful. The rubber piece can fall off if you play games too hard or too much. This system kind of ruined Smash on the Wii U. Instead of getting a true adventure mode, we got a 3DS version of Smash. You know, the, the version that nobody plays anymore? Did anyone ever use the AR cards after first getting the 3DS? Hmm? Or what about the 3D camera? Like, honestly, the 3D just makes your pictures look super blurry. And it doesn't help that the normal pictures are super grainy, it's, it's, it's just bad. God, what is that screen resolution? Oh, it's 800 by 240 pixels for both screens. That's not even close to HD. And games are still coming out on this thing in 2017. The original 3DS didn't have a second thumbstick, so what does Nintendo do? They give us the Circle Pad Pro, which is a huge slab of plastic with an extra circle pad. This couldn't possibly look more ugly, but hey, at least the new 3DSs have a built-in second circle pad. If you can even count this tiny little nub being one. I mean, just look at how small this friggin' thing is. There was no GBA Virtual Console, even though the console proved to be capable. The Ambassador program included 10 GBA games, so why didn't they keep going with that? The 2DS's design makes zero sense. Removing the clamshell makes it more likely that the screen will get cracked, and this was marketed mostly towards kids. Rip all those 2DS screens. Also, isn't it strange how the 2DS and new 2DS just remove 3D entirely when the 3D was the main gimmick of the console? Adding or changing the micro SD card on the new 3DS is like a giant science experiment. You have to remove your game card and stylus, unscrew the back plate of the 3DS with a screwdriver, and then you can swap it out. And don't even get me started on transferring data between SD cards. Ugh. You know, after all this trouble, why didn't any of the 3DS models have a lot more storage to begin with? 
And why did Nintendo include the ZL and ZR buttons on the new models when most games don't even use them? The fact that some games are exclusive to the new system. Like, you can't play Xenoblade on an older 3DS. Face Raiders is pretty terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. You can only get SNES games from the eShop with the new models? Like, are, are you actually serious? Nintendo, it's a SNES game. A SNES game! Like, what kind of nonsense is this? The only way you can play Kid Icarus Uprising is in 3D, and you have to have it on a specific stand. I'm sure the game is fun, but good lord. You know why we didn't get the Ice Climbers in Smash 4? Because of this thing. So good job, you inferior underpowered system. You done screwed it up. The 3DS themes actually cost money. Why? Why can't we just unlock them by playing games or something? If you want to use Amiibo with your older 3DS, you have to buy an additional NFC reader. When I'm turning my 3DS off, I also have to hit a button on the touch screen to turn it off. Why do I have to hit two buttons to turn off my console? Why did Nintendo get rid of PictoChat? That was the greatest service of all time. I didn't even know game notes existed until now. And I don't know why anyone would take notes when you have the internet with its millions of game guides. I also never saw a point to the notifications app. Whenever you download something off the eShop, you can't tell how long it's gonna take because there's no progress bar. Oh cool, a super outdated internet browser. It's not like I can't use my phone, tablet, computer, or basically anything else to surf the internet faster. Don't let the meme maker try to make your meme. It won't end well, trust me. You know what? Let's talk about transferring data between the 3DS and new 3DS. What you need is your 3DS, an SD card, wireless internet, the new 3DS, the micro SD card, which has to be equal or bigger than your original SD card, a size zero Phillips screwdriver, and possibly a computer and USB adapter to connect the SD card to the computer. You got all that? Good. Now go to system transfer in the system settings of both 3DS's. Click transfer from a system in the 3DS family on both systems, then on the regular 3DS you click send from this system, and on the new 3DS receive from 3DS. Then make sure to click delete to clean the microSD on the new 3DS so you can actually transfer the data. Then push no on the new 3DS to confirm no other SD cards have been used in that system. Then click yes on the regular 3DS to confirm that you're using an SD card, which is actually kind of ridiculous that the 3DS can't even register that itself, and then there's an option to transfer your data with a PC. But screw that, we're going wireless because this has already taken way too long. And after the data is finished transferring, you'll reset your 3DSs and it's finally done. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Not all opinions shared are accurate to my actual thoughts and feelings. So don't get all weed up, I. Right? The name, Wii U. This has to be the worst name for a console of all time. <sighs> hey man. Hey. How's it going? Just playing some Wii U. What's a Wii U? That you know, it's the the new console, the Wii U. So it's a Wii. No, it's Nintendo's new console. See, like Wii U. There's a U underneath it. It's a new thing. So it's a new controller for the Wii. It's got no, a TV no. It? Like here, why, why don't you play this with me, Smash Bros? Remember this, right? It, yeah. it works with the Wii U, the new console. This is a Wii remote. No, no, the Wii U. It's a new console. Yeah, but if, if it works with a Wii remote, isn't it just a Wii? The GameCube adapters are used for one game, Smash Bros. They really couldn't make it work for virtual console titles or anything else? You have to pay to transfer your Wii Virtual Console games to be playable on the Wii U so it'll have Wii U exclusive features like save stating. Give me a break. You can only have 100 friends on your friend list? Do you realize how annoying this is for Nintendo YouTubers? The Wii U gamepad has a three to four hour charge, and it doesn't even hold a charge. One time I found my old DS in storage and I opened it to find that it was still on after several months. So my 10 year old DS system has a better battery life than the Wii U. The Miiverse community. I never knew Dark Pit was Muslim. Miiverse censors posts, a social media platform censoring mean words. That'll turn out well. The Wii Virtual Console titles weren't all ported to the Wii U. Nintendo said the Wii U could run two gamepads, two separate gamepads. Yet not a single game has allowed that. The fact that the gamepad is the only controller that I can't throw on the ground when I get angry or else I basically have to buy a whole new console. The basic Wii U set has 8 gigabytes of storage. Eight gigabytes! And the deluxe set isn't any better, 32 gigabytes! 
unless you buy everything on disk, you're basically going to be forced to get an external hard drive over time. There's no ethernet hookup. You have to spend even more money to buy a USB attachment. You can play games just on the gamepad, but you have to be relatively close to the console. Most of Nintendo's biggest Wii U hits have been ported to the 3DS or have similar versions on the 3DS. The Wii U is so unsuccessful that it's being taken off store shelves before the Switch has even come out. Why didn't we get a new F-Zero? The only games where the gamepad actually changed the gameplay up was Nintendo Land and Game & Wario, from what I can recall. And Splatoon, I guess, but even that can be reworked so it can be played on a normal controller. The TV button exists. Did anyone ever use the TV button? Hmm? Any takers? There was no reason to own a Wii U until the last couple years of its life, considering most of the games were just the same old thing. It can't play Blu-rays or even DVDs! I mean, jeez! Okay, I won't lie, I actually haven't used a DVD or a Blu-ray in like 50 years. Amiibo Tap is the biggest waste of time. Scan an Amiibo to play a demo of a random game? I can't get like a discount or something like that on a select title? I mean, come on, I bought the Amiibo. Give me more! The commercials. Er, wait, was there any? The huge lack of third-party games. Most of the third-party games are inferior to the originals, and some came out several months after the original console releases. There's more views on the Nintendo Switch reveal trailer than Wii U sold. There's more Amiibo sold than Wii U's. There was more Virtual Boy sold than- Okay, actually, not that one. Minecraft for the Wii U doesn't take advantage of the gamepad. You would think that the gamepad screen would be used only for inventory, but... Nah. Is it just me, or is it awkward playing multiplayer games where one person uses the entire TV while the other gets just the gamepad? The sad fact that the Wii U does have very good games, but only the hardcore Nintendo fans care about it. Nintendo allows pretty much any indie developer onto the Wii U, and that's not necessarily a good thing. As an example, look at The Stone Cutter. It literally takes a few minutes to play the whole game, it looks like ass, programming probably took about 30 minutes, and yet I had to pay money for this! Where is the quality control? There's still no voice chat in the system. Most of the games themselves don't even have voice chat, and if they do, it's very limited like in Smash Bros. The gamepad really should have had a feature that allowed the screen to constantly stream Facebook slash Twitter while we played the main game on the TV. That kind of utilization actually makes sense, and it hurts me that Nintendo didn't take advantage. The shoulder buttons don't have pressure triggers like every other controller has. Even the GameCube controller had them. What's up with that? We got Wind Waker HD. HD, Twilight Princess HD, but not Melee HD. According to Amazon right now, the Wii U still costs 350 bucks while I can get a PS4 or an Xbox One for under 300. Warning, the following video is over exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings because I actually like the Switch. Remember to stay cool kiddos and don't do drugs, okay? Why is the HDMI cable like five feet long? This is the year 2017 and the AC adapter is a giant brick. This fragile, flimsy kickstand is definitely gonna break. There is nothing to protect the screen when you put it in the dock. I swear I'm gonna scratch my screen from the frickin' dock. So this Joy-Con grip doesn't charge my Joy-Cons, even though the damn thing looks like a battery. Wait, there's a charging version? What the f***? My hands cramp up using the Joy-Con sideways. The wrist strap grips require so much force to take off. These Joy-Cons are way too tiny. I can hide them in my hands. You can actually put the wrist strap grips on the wrong way and get them stuck. There is very little push with the joysticks on the Joy-Cons. I don't get a game with the Switch? I have to spend more money? The battery life is awful. I can only play three hours of Zelda on the go. The dock looks like a toaster, but it won't make toast. The cartridges taste awful. The joystick and B button are way too close together. Friend coat? <laughs> Nintendo, oh. You've done so much right, but nope! Them kids, oh, they want them codes! They like the secret codes, yeah! Why does the dock cost $90? I could break this thing in half if I wanted to. And $80 for two new Joy-Cons? Guys, don't, do not lose your Joy-Cons, holy crap. I can't use my Wii remotes anymore. The Switch didn't launch with Melee HD. You can't turn off the Switch with the Joy-Cons or the Pro Controller, only with the tablet. This is annoying if you're in TV mode. My credit card information doesn't save in the eShop, so I have to type it in every time I buy a game. 
third parties might ditch the console in a year because it's not as powerful as a PS4 or Xbox One. I can't change the font when I'm adding text to a picture. If the Switch can support wired connections, why isn't there an Ethernet port? Instead, I have to waste the USB port with an adapter. Only 32 gigabytes of storage? Great, I'm gonna have to spend more money on a micro SD card now. The Joy-Con shoulder buttons don't have analog triggers like the GameCube did. And the same goes for the Pro Controller. Does Nintendo have personal beef with these triggers or something? These sideways shoulder buttons are kind of a pain to push. Why isn't there catchy background music in the Switch menus? I really like the design of the news app, but I have Twitter. I'm never gonna use this. So I can post pictures to Facebook and Twitter, but not MySpace? The Wii U had four USB ports and the Switch has three. Nintendo is slowly becoming Apple. I feel bad for people that have OCD seeing the Switch that has a red and blue Joy-Con. The Nintendo Switch for some reason charges a new MacBook Pro when it's plugged in. What? <laughs> okay, that's actually really funny. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So will you lighten up already? Please, it's gonna be okay. Since this is handheld only, I think the battery life would be better than three to seven hours. And what's funnier is the regular Switch got an upgraded battery life of 4.5 to nine hours. So why would anybody buy this? The Joy-Cons don't detach anymore. And it doesn't work with a dock, which literally defeats the Switch's entire selling point. You know how the regular Switch has a lousy kickstand? Well, the Switch Lite did the next best thing, gave up and removed it. So have fun using a Pro Controller and awkwardly setting your Switch Lite on a table. No dock means no way to use an ethernet connection for the internet. Is that even gonna make a difference though, because Switch Online? Like seriously, P2P servers in 2019? Also, there's still no party chat or message system that existed on the Xbox 360 a decade ago? The specs haven't been upgraded at all. It performs pretty much the same. And the Joy-Cons no longer have HD rumble or the IR camera. That's not the worst thing ever, but it's still kind of lame. That means you'll need additional Joy-Con controllers to play games like 1-2 Switch. 1-2 Switch. The Switch Lite doesn't work with Labo at all. And it won't work with the Ring Con or Ring Fit Adventure. You can connect Joy-Cons, but if you don't already on a switch then you can't charge them without a charging dock or a charging grip so if you need extra joy cons to begin with why not just get a regular switch the overall volume seems to be slightly lower there's no auto brightness feature that's a weird thing to remove since this is a dedicated handheld it should come with a stylus just like the ds and 3ds did the screen is still in 720p an upgrade to 1080p would have been nice when it comes to the internal storage size, it's still 32 gigabytes. Even worse, if you have a lot of digital games downloaded and want to re-download them, that means you have to get another micro SD card. Look, I know it's my fault for going all digital here, but still. The speakers are on the bottom, which might be a problem if you have huge hands since you'll buffer out the noise. If you're playing at night while charging your Switch, you can't really rest it on your stomach since the charger port is on the bottom, so you'd have to hold it up or just lay on your belly. So what happens if these Joy-Cons get the infamous Joy-Con drift? Mm-mm-mm, that's no good. <sighs> you know, maybe this just isn't for me. I mean, the Switch Lite is just meant for handheld gaming, and I pretty much always play it with the dock. Hey, hey, I just wanted to congratulate you on hitting 50,000 subs, so here you go. Keep up the good work, dude. You got this. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Well, I've got a Switch Lite now. I, how about we talk about why the Switch Lite is mind-blowing? In three, two, one. The price point is at 200 bucks. That's pretty fantastic for a console with so many high quality games on it. Got her the left Joy-Con buttons and now we have a D-pad. It's hard to tell if it's gonna last or not, but this is way better than just buttons. For those that don't have a Switch, this is probably a good alternative if you don't see yourself playing it on the TV. The new design is really sleek. This is one of the prettiest Nintendo consoles I've seen in quite a while. And its smaller size makes it a lot easier to carry around too. Let's be real, the Switch Lite is basically Nintendo saying goodbye to the 3DS. Oh, you were a good little handheld. We'll never forget you. You know, the name of the Switch Lite actually 
makes sense too. It's not something dumb like new Nintendo Switch or Switch U, it's just a lighter version of the Switch. The shoulder buttons feel much nicer too. They've got a really solid click compared to the flimsy feel of the normal Joy-Cons. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Look, pal, the Switch is the Switch one way or another. Capiche? This is the Switch Pro, fellas. All those rumors about getting a 4K Switch, and this is what we get. The box is now vertically packaged, because I guess that's cooler? Instead of 32 gigabytes of internal storage, now we get 64 gigabytes. Ooh, wow, now I only need a slightly smaller micro SD card to hold all my games. Nintendo, you're cracking me up with a standout feature being a dedicated LAN port. Glad you guys made it to the year 2006. Also, the LAN port isn't that special when a USB adapter will do the exact same thing. And you know what else? Nintendo's online is still garbage, so a LAN port is barely gonna make a difference for most games. Why did the notch shrink for opening the game card slot? It's much harder to open for seemingly no reason. The 7 inch screen is a nice enough upgrade, but is it really that noticeable? Nah. In fact, you'll probably notice your games in handheld mode are even blurrier because of a drop in fidelity. The 720p screen resolution isn't increased at all. Like seriously, you couldn't have updated the screen resolution to at least 1080p? So lame. I appreciate this wider adjustable kickstand, but why on earth wasn't this included in the original Switch? Nice! I'm so glad the audio was enhanced. That was truly a new feature that the whole world was begging for. Can we talk about this name, by the way? Nintendo Switch OLED model? What about Switch XL or new Nintendo Switch? At least be consistent with your dumb names. The old screen is nice, but the PS Vita had one almost 10 years ago. It's not exciting enough technology to name your console based off the screen. OLED screens can also have burn-in issues, by the way, and I'm not saying that's gonna happen with the OLED Switch, but who knows? I've been playing handheld on the OLED for a while now, and I'm not gonna lie, I forgot it was even an OLED screen to begin with. Also, this is a very glossy screen, so expect it to pick up your crispy little fingerprints. If you wanted any meaningful hardware upgrades, then stop that crazy talk. Nintendo fans never get what they want, but buy everything anyway. Ah, the life of a Nintendo fan. Not even the battery's been improved. I'm sure it'll be slightly better because of the OLED screen, but nothing beyond negligible. So why make the Joy-Cons and dock white, but make the Joy-Con grips and the Switch itself black still? Are you trying to copy that PS5 look? Like, what's going on here? And the Joy-Cons are exactly the same as the other ones, so you still have to worry about Joy-Con drift. Supposedly, in quotations, Nintendo has fixed the issue by adding foam strips underneath their joysticks, but why do I have to worry about that? They should have upgraded their Joy-Cons or something. The dock itself is still plastic on the inside, making it more likely to scratch your screen when inserting your Switch. Just some rubber or even cloth would have been a nice upgrade. Thanks Nintendo for finally adding Bluetooth audio to your console, only four years late. But then of course, this is Bluetooth audio only. There's no mic support, huh? And let's not forget that there's still no themes or folders or native voice chat. All features that should have been added ages ago. Oh, also, uh, while we're at it, the Mario Switch still bothers me because they kept the kickstand black and made the whole console entirely red. That's gonna bug me until the end of time. Why would you do that? What the hell is this NES selection? Eliminator Boat Duel? Scat? The Immortal? Look, I know I'm cherry picking here, but why bother adding actually bad games to your service? But <laughs> don't even get me started on the SNES library. Oh, thank God we've got Super Baseball Simulator and Magical Drop 2. Oh, wow. Oh, but who could forget Smash Tennis? Hmm. Oh, but please, just look, don't even bother adding Earthbound, Super Mario RPG. No one actually likes those games. They're stupid. They're stupid. Nintendo's menu UI was perfectly in harmony until they added this big red Switch Online button. Why ruin something so great? So, I forgot my parental controls password, and turned it on so I could see more accurate game time. But it turns out, it wasn't that accurate, so the parental controls button is now stuck on my Switch. For forever. Three years later, and the special offer still feels like a wasted opportunity. Sure, you can play Pac-Man 99 and Tetris 99, those are slightly intriguing, but you also get Game Trials, which lets you play full games for a limited time. Uh, why do I have to pay to do that? Oh, 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 but you can only buy NES slash SNES controls controllers if you're paying for the service. What? Oh, but hey, at least you get in-game rewards for a total of four games. Wow.
That's really cool. Really cool Nintendo school. You know, I shouldn't be stunned that Nintendo actually added the ability to change your button mapping, but I am stunned by that. Look, let's just be real here. You don't really need the Switch OLED model when the good old regular Switch is still here and it's still great. You've got all the same games running on it, the hardware is the same, the battery is the same, it's slightly lighter, and it costs less. Don't forget about the Switch Lite. Oh my god, we've already gone over this when I gave that to you two years ago. Exactly! This thing is great for dedicated handheld gamers such as myself. Plus it costs less and look at the stylish color, Ooh, yeah. The battery is also worse, the screen is smaller, and you can't remove the Joy-Cons. Eh, it works for me. Uh, hello? What are you scallywags doing talking about another Switch? Isn't this a Switch OLED model video? And you are who? Oh, you guys don't remember me. It's me, Nathaniel Nandy. What? Look, I know it's been a bloody minute since last time, but neither of you remember me? <sighs> Family, am I right? <laughs> Fellas, look, the Switch OLED model's supposed to just be a small upgrade to the Switch. It's got the nicer screen, the bigger bevel, the nicer kickstand. It's supposed to be small and little meaty if you're willing to pay a little more coin for it. And honestly, I think it's kind of worth it. Anyway, I see you boys got a lot to think about. Maybe hit up the good old ancestry, all right? I'll catch you later. Ta-ta. <laughs> you have another brother? Nathaniel, we are brothers. This is our triplet, apparently. He looks just like us. 